Hello, lovely people. Welcome to that Geek of a Day. I'm Penj, and welcome back to Civilization VI Rise and Fall. Oh, it's a delight to see Civ VI back on the channel. I love playing Civ VI. I love the fact that it's back on, and this screen here, oh, it's all very lovely. However, I do approach this series with a bit of a sense of trepidation, because we are going to be attempting our hardest Civilization VI challenge to date, because we are going to begin today the Civilization VI Rise and Fall Deity Difficulty 1 City Challenge. We're going to play Civ VI Rise and Fall on the maximum difficulty level of Deity, but we are only going to give ourselves one city. The capital city of our Civ is all we are going to have. Can it be done? <laughs> I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know. We shall find out when we start playing. Now, I have done some research. I've actually planned this a little bit, which is a bit terrifying for the Geek Cup, but we normally just, you know, it's normally a bit slapdash, I'll be honest. But no, I've actually planned. I've got little notes, two pages of notes of various bits and bobs and kind of paths that I want to research to and wonders are going to be pretty crucial, all that kind of stuff. So there is some logic behind this. A few of you who've been around a little while on the channel will know that we have done a few other One City challenges before. We have done two, I believe, on the base game of Civ 6, so without Rise and Fall. I think we failed both of those. I think both of those went wrong. One of those was on Emperor difficulty, and we failed that. And then we have done a uh, One City challenge with Rise and Fall installed, and I think we took victory in that one, which is jolly exciting. But I have learned... I've learned from these. I've learned so much over all the time I've been playing Civ 6 and watching other people playing Civ 6 as well. So I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling like I'm a bit more prepared. The Emperor difficulty challenge that I did, particularly, I was relatively unprepared. I didn't really have a plan. I just went in and went, ah, it's fine. I'll just build some stuff. I'm sure I'll win. And I didn't win. But now I've got a bit of a plan. Kind of got an idea what we need to do. So uh, yes, let's kick things off. First things first, I just want to show you the additional content. So the mods that we are going to be using. We've got um, all of the uh, all of the regular, you know, the actual proper official ones installed. All the stuff you might expect. Get rid of that. So the ones that we have added ourselves. Unique district icons. We've had that on lots of times. If there's a unique district, uh, like the Romans have a bath, it is a different uh, different icon. It's a different icon on the screen and stuff to whatever that district is sort of replacing. So you can tell that it's a different thing. Real great people. That, again, has no bearing on the game. It just shows different faces in the great per uh, great person screen. Uh, quick start just removes all the logos and the start bump. That's it. There's nothing actually in game that you get from that. Farms plus plus improves farms to give one housing each. And uh, farms can be built on cattle, citrus, and bananas. I don't quite know why you'd want to build a farm on those three things, but whatever. But uh, yeah, we get one housing. This obviously also applies to the sieves, uh, the enemy sieves as well. So it's not just us that's going to be getting that bonus that will help us. The enemy sieves will also be getting this boost. The big thing really is the return of the Sea Queen mod interface, whatever you want to call it. This thing. So it improves the uh, improves the interface in various ways. So yeah, there's a better trading screen and a bit of better diplomacy and all that kind of stuff. It's been off for a little while. I think ever since Rise and Fall came out, I don't think they were in a rush to update it. It's now been updated. So that is now back in. So uh, yeah, if the interface looks slightly different, that's because we're using this thing here, the community quick user interface, sort of uh, called CQE in the mod community and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's go forth and set up our game. Okay, map options first. Uh, yep, rise and fall. Obviously, we need to have that on. We're going to put this all the way up to deity difficulty. Oh, dearie me. I'm already scared. Ancient area. Yep, want to start right at the start. Standard speed, as you would expect. Continents. Uh, no, we're going to change this to Pangea, Pangea, however you pronounce that. One big landmass. I am going to try and give myself the most kind of non-cheating advantages I can in this game. If we're playing with one city on day to difficulty, I'm going to give myself all the bonuses I can get. And we are going to be going for a culture slash tourism victory. And that requires you to meet all the other sieves. So from the moment you meet the other sieves, you start sending tourists their way, I believe. So if we're on a Pangea Pangea map... Everybody should, in theory, be on one landmass. I can meet people quicker and start getting tourism over to them quicker. That's the plan. Again, it's allowed in the rules. It's not cheating. It's not cheating within the rules of the game. It's all fine. Map size, standard. Yes, please. 12 city-states. Yep. Uh, resources, standard. I'm not going to put that up. I'm tempted to put that up, but I'm not going to. All this stuff normal, uh, except for start position. We're going to put legendary. We're going to put a legendary start position. I'm only going to have one city, so I'd rather have the start position I have be at least vaguely good rather than a load of old tut. 
So yes, we shall have a legendary start position. Thank you very much. Everything else should have all normal. Uh, we'll take the score victory off, but we shall allow culture, domination, religious, and science. Obviously, we ourselves cannot go for a domination victory because we can't have any other city other than our starting city. Our capital is the only city we can have. So a domination victory is sort of out of bounds because to get that, you have to capture the capitals, which means we'll have more than one city. So we will negate the rules of the challenge. Uh, culture victory, religious victory, and science victory. Yep, we shall be going for a culture victory. Uh, all this stuff is here. No duplicate leaders. Barbarians are on. All this stuff is all fine. And now let's come to who we're going to play as and who our enemies are going to be because I've decided that I'm going to pick who I'm going to be playing against. So, first things first, we are playing as the French. We are playing as Catherine de Medici. So, she gives one level of diplomatic visibility greater than normal with every sieve. That's sort of okay, I'm not too fussed about that. The good thing that she gets is a free spy and extra spy capacity when you get castles, which is good, and all the spies start as agents with a free promotion. So we will be doing a lot of espionage. We'll be going and stealing things off other people. We'll be sabotaging people's wonders and works and rocketry and all that kind of stuff. The big thing that they get, really, that I've chosen the French for is the Grand Tour. Plus 20% production toward medieval, renaissance, renaissance, how we pronounce that word, and industrial era wonders. Yes, that is very good. So from the third, fourth, and fifth eras, we shall be getting ourselves 20% production toward all those wonders, which is very good. But the big thing, tourism from wonders of any era is doubled. And if you combine that with other things, if you combine that with other policies and such like, that could be very powerful indeed. So that is what we are going to be going down. We need to get some wonders down. Even if we just have three or four, three or four wonders working their way with doubled sort of stuff from their Grand Tour ability, plus some other sort of uh, policy things would be tremendous. That would be very, very powerful. They also get the Guard Imperial. I think that's how you pronounce it. So that's good. Yeah, French unique industrial era melee unit, plus 10 combat strength when fighting on your capital's continent. So yeah, that's quite useful. And then the Chateau. The Chateau is also very good. Plus two culture. And an extra plus two culture if it's next to a wonder. Will we build many of those given they've only got one city and space will be limited? Probably not. We might have one in there possibly. I don't know. But whatever. We'll see. The big thing really is the grand tour. That's the big draw. Tourism from wonders of any era doubled is so powerful. So uh, yeah, given that we're going for a tourism victory, that is going to be the big draw for the French. Now let's put in all of our opponents. And there they are, the seven sieves that are going to form our opponents in the Deity Difficulty One City Challenge. So, in no particular order, they are Tomiris, Tomiris, I don't know how you say that name. You here with the crown, we'll just call you Tom. Tom, just there with the crown. Philip II, Gilgamesh, John Curtin, Tamar, Chandragupta, and Genghis Khan. And these have all been chosen specifically as opponents for this challenge, because I think that we can, you know, get round them hating us. We can do certain things to make them like us. And therefore, they're less likely to attack us, less likely to have war. I mean, obviously, we won't avoid war, but if we can make it as least likely as possible that we'll go to war, we might as well try it. So, uh, Tom, Tomiris, I don't know how you say that, whatever. Tom, just here. Uh, yes, you like long-term alliances. I will absolutely have a long-term alliance with you. That is not a problem. And you dislike surprise wars. And I think you like people that declare surprise wars on anyone else. Now, given that I will be, uh, I'll be small fry. I will be small fry with my one city. I might well be considered easy pickings by the other sieves. So, uh, yeah, if other people are declaring surprise wars on me, she, Tom here, will then be angry with them and she might well declare war on those. So she might be declaring war on my enemies because they are declaring surprise wars on me, which is quite useful. That's quite handy. Phil. Philip likes uh, like sieves with his religion. Yeah, absolutely. Come on in. Uh, yeah, I'll have your religion. It'll probably be Catholicism if you get there first. So, uh, yep, I'll have your religion. Thank you. And he dislikes sieves that spread religion to his city. Don't worry, Phil. I won't be doing that. I don't think religion will form part of this game, to be perfectly honest. Gilgamesh. He likes those with long-term alliances. Absolutely. We'll go round and find you and we'll have a nice long-term alliance. And he dislikes attacks on his allies. So again, we need to get in with Gilgamesh as soon as we can, be his ally, and then he will dislike people that are attacking us, and he might well go to war with them, which will be helpful. John Curtin, he likes defensive packs with his friends, which is no bad thing. I will have that. I will have a defensive pact. Thank you very much. And he dislikes civs who occupy enemy cities. Again, we won't be occupying enemy cities because we're a one-city challenge. So uh, yeah, he will not dislike us for that reason. Tamar's one is very simple. <laughs> she likes uh, walls in cities. 
I'm going to have one city. I will put a wall in it. She will like me. She dislikes cities with no walls. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that will not be a problem. She will like me for that reason. Anyway, Chandra Gupta is expansive. He dislikes civs close to his borders. This is the uh, the only potentially potentially uh, sort of troublesome one. If he starts next to us, he might well dislike us. Hopefully, he will start far away. He will dislike all the other civs that are around him. And then I would far away. He won't dislike me for sharing borders with him. That's the hope. This is the only kind of risky one here. Chandra Gupta is the only kind of one with any risk. And Genghis Khan, he dislikes civs with more mounted units. I doubt with one city I'm going to get more mounted units than Genghis Khan. So he, therefore, will not dislike me for that reason. And with that, I think we are ready to begin. The players are all set. The map options are selected. Victory conditions are down. Advanced options are chosen too. It's all ready. We're all ready to begin. I'm a bit scared seeing Dane's difficulty just there. Because I'm only going to have one city on this difficulty level. These guys, these guys are going to have massive boost to us. On Dane's difficulty, the Civ gets like huge production boosts and science boosts and culture boosts and all that over us. They just get massive, massive boosts. So knowing that they're going to have lots of cities with all these boosts and we're going to have one city on Dane's difficulty because of our challenge is a little bit scary. But whatever, let's give it a go, shall we? Can it be done? I don't know. Let's find out. Just a note before we begin... This is the random seed and the map random seed that has been given to us by Civ. This might well change because I'm going to start the game and have a look at the map. And if the map is not favourable, I will restart it. If I'm only going to get one city, I have to start it in a very, very good place. Deity difficulty, one city challenge in a really awful start location is going to be even more difficult than it already is. So uh, yeah, this might, if you know, if you see it and think that map's interesting, and then you type these in, that might not be the actual uh, map seed that we're playing on. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. So uh, here we go. Let's start the game and see what happens. Let us begin the Civilization 6 Rise and Fall Deity Difficulty 1 City Challenge. Whilst I've been waiting for the game to load, I have a bit of a quandary. I have a question that I'm hoping that one of you lovely people out there can help me out with. Exactly what is Catherine here drinking from this lovely fluted glass? What is this drink that she is drinking? I genuinely can't tell what that is. It looks kind of blackened almost, like a sort of blackened burnt liquid i don't know what that is given that she's french i was expecting that to be wine france and wine go together france one of the world's most sort of famous and prolific wine producing countries i was expecting her to be enjoying a lovely glass of wine but no that's not wine that's not red wine that is not white wine that is not rosé wine unless there is another <laughs> a fourth type of wine that i am blissfully unaware of that she is drinking i don't know smoked wine or tar wine or something i don't know what that is i mean certainly she looks like she's delighted to have this particular beverage down it yeah down the hatch why not <laughs> enjoy it please but yeah i just love to know what it is because every time i load this game i will see her holding this glass of mysterious weird tar wine or whatever it is and i really want to know what it is because otherwise it'll really just niggle at me every time i load it i'll see that and think what is that what has she got in this glass so if anybody does know please please let me know in the comments because otherwise it will slowly drive me mad Okay, so we've had a few false starts, I will admit. We've loaded up quite a lot of maps because some of them have been truly, truly awful start locations. So I'm really hoping this one is better. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Let's start the game. Okay, what have we got? I think we're starting on a Plains Hill style, which is lovely. That's very good. We've got ourselves some rice nearby. A couple of stone resources. That Oh, actually loads of stone. Stone there, stone down here, that's good. We're on a river, that's kind of obligatory and see if it gives you that kind of thing anyway. But okay, we'll buy a river, that is lovely. And there are three different types of luxury resources, kind of, that we can see here. Now, a couple of them are quite far away. So that tobacco is relatively far away. That's going to be in the third tier of the city, if we get it at all. This mercury is also uh, three tiles away. So we might have to make a grab for those if we want to get them. However, in the second tier of tiles around the city, so we, if we settle the city just there, the first tier is okay. That's not too bad. The second tier is sort of okay as well. These tiles down here can be improved to be a bit better. But we would get ourselves some tobacco, which is nice. That's a lovely luxury. And 
some spices. We can make spice tobacco. That'd be quite good. Let's blend them together. That's a third luxury, surely. So, um, yes, we've got those two. Now, let's take a look at the general sort of starting location. I did, um, I did actually put a video together about starting location, sort of five tips, if you like. I'll try and put a card thing. Do they appear up there? I think they're in the top right. They kind of appear where the arrow is pointing, maybe. Um, about it was a very, it was a sort of shortish video, maybe ten minutes long, uh, just going through five things that you might want to consider when you are settling your starting city. So number one is the tile that we're settling on is a Plains Hills tile. Now they're very good to settle on. They're very good to settle on. I didn't know this until relatively recently in my sort of Civ gaming uh, history, but um, we should think I should know better because I've played Civ an awful lot. But when you settle a city. Civ, make sure that your city has two food and at least one production. So if you settled here on this grassland tile, uh, the game would go, all right, there you go, you've got two food, don't worry about it. I need to uh, give you a point of production though, and it would give you a point of production. If you settled here on this plains tile, it would go, well, you've got a point of production, I don't need to meddle with your production, that's fine, but you need food. So I'll give you an extra point of food. So it would up your yield from that tile where your city was to two food and one production. However, if you settle on a Plains Hills tile, we've got the two food, which is fine, but Civ doesn't bring down the production. It leaves it alone. So we settle our city on here. We've got two production, so double the production if we settled anywhere else, straight off, which is beautiful. So we are definitely going to settle there. I don't think there are any other Plains Hills tiles. That's Grassland Hills. That is a marsh, which is not ideal, I'll be honest, but that's, you know, we'll deal with that. It's okay. That's fine. I think we're in a very, very good place. That is a pretty good spot. Uh, let's have a look around then. So the first tier of tiles, yeah, we've got some woods there. That's a four yield tile. That's pretty good. That's good. Hill, hills are good. We're getting some mining in, getting some early production in. That's not too bad. Second tier, some more hills, some rice, which is lovely. Yeah, these things out here. When we've got uh, quarries on these, they'll be really good. That'll be very powerful. And then down here, a lovely deer resource. That's very nice. So a nice yield of four tile there, which is very good. We can't see what's just there. There could be something absolutely amazing on that tile just there, and we can't see it. Let's see if we can bring our warriors back. Oh, no, we're going to settle there anyway. And I think settling on that city will give us visibility of that anyway. So let's move the warriors over to the west first. Let's put them there. Ooh. Right, okay, that's very important. Oh, we want as many of these as we can get. We want as many of those as we can get. We need to eke out every tiny little advantage we've got. So let's run up that way. Oh, there's copper up there. Could we get our hands on that, possibly? Um, no, it's slightly too far away. Okay, I think we settle here. I think we settle just here. This is a very good spot. Now, yeah, it's weird that it's telling me to settle across the other side of the river. No, no, I want to settle here. Here is a good space. This is a very good tile to settle on. So let's settle our city. Hopefully that's a good tile. Yeah, it's a hill. It's a hill tile. We can put a mine on it and get some production out of it. It could have been a little bit more exciting, I'll be honest, but never mind. So the first thing we want to do, really, I would say, to make the most out of these uh, stone resources that we're going to acquire, is to research mining. I think mining is going to be our first sort of uh, first job. Get some mines on there if we can. And production wise, we want to build some defense because we're on deity difficulty. And that means the barbarians are going to be really, really monstrously hard to kill. And they're just going to come in and try and absolutely wipe us out. So we need to get ourselves some defense. So let's get slingers. Let's get a couple of slingers queued up. Now, yes, I'm using the uh, the queuing thing. This is the CQE interface, which allows you to queue things up, which is very, very lovely. So a couple of slingers queued up. Now, normally I'd go for a monument. Normally I'd go for that. And it pains me to not have one of them in because it gives you a culture and culture is really good. And really, we want to get Code of Laws because in 15 turns, we can get plus five unit combat strength when fighting barbarians, which is really good, particularly on deity difficulty. We need that. So yeah, I think that's a very good starting spot for a city. We're on Plains Hill, so as you can see, look, we've still got the two production. So we've got that extra point of production throughout the whole entire game, which is just lovely. That can just stick with us forever and ever and ever, which is brilliant. So we're going to produce things far quicker than if we were anywhere else, pretty much on the map, which is lovely. We've got some good luxuries around it. We might have to make a, a beeline for those ones, possibly, depending on where other people settle, because other people might settle near there. Someone could settle in through just there, so we might have to buy tiles if we can to uh to get out to those we should get that and that fairly quickly i would have thought and um yeah we're on a river for water that is lovely okay right 
This is good. Let's just shift your time on. Let's just see. So everyone else will now be settling cities. Everybody else is going to be doing stuff. Right. The AI should have settled their first cities. Now, just to give you some context of deity difficulty, what bonuses do they get? Well, let me enlighten you with the ludicrous bonuses that the uh, AI will get because we're on deity difficulty. They get themselves a 32% boost to science culture and faith, which is just ludicrous. They get themselves an even more utterly ludicrous 80% boost to production and gold. 80% boost to production, which is just crazy. And they start with so many things. They're going to start with four free techs, four free civics, three settlers, five warriors, and two builders, I believe. I think that's what it said on one of the civ wikis. And we've started with uh, nothing extra, nothing exciting or extra, and we can only have one city. Uh, am, am I mad? Am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this? Now I look at that, I actually don't know. Uh, and also they get massive combat bonuses, particularly against us. So that's nice. Right, uh, warriors, head into this tribal village and see what there is. It's a builder unit. Oh, that is phenomenally useful. That is brilliant. We can upgrade some of the uh, some of the stuff around us already. So we could pop down here, build a mine, once we've worked out what mining is. We could put a mine just here, we could get a farm, and we could get ourselves some stone. We could get ourselves some quarries on there, and then get some quarries going on, up our production, make it even better. Uh, what tile are they actually going to? Let's have a quick look at this. They are going to that tile. Ah, they're getting the... Um, they're getting the spices tile in seven turns. Uh, the sea queen interface normally does put colours on this. I wonder why it's not doing it. It normally puts it on this screen. Oh, there we go. Right, and a little sort of a little bug there, a little bugette. So, uh, yeah, this is quite useful, I think. So the red tile is the one that we're working. The green tile is obviously the city tile. And the purple tile is the one that we're going to expand to next. So our borders are going to expand out to that tile next. That's good. That's a good thing. Okay, uh, let's bring them round the top. Let's bring them around the top. Right. Builders, go to just here. Can we build a farm, one assumes? Yes. Okay, so we can build a farm. That's absolutely fine. Farm is in place. That's lovely. We need to keep an eye on these because barbarians will try and kidnap them because the barbarians are nasty. Uh, right, let's go up to there. And I want to go on that tile, please. Let's put you back in the city for now. Let's put you and have a little sleep in the city. So you're safe. You're not stood outside here waiting for some like barbarian scout to run in and go, Mwahaha, I have kidnapped your free builders. Goodbye. So yeah, we'll put you in there for safety. We'll bring the warrior across the top of here. I want to see what's up here. That looks like desert. Are we going to end up with a bit of desert? That could be desert. That would not be ideal. We might have to slap a wonder on it or something to make it a useful tile. Right, run you across there, through the swamp. Also, I'm expecting to be in a lot of Dark Ages. I'm expecting to be in an awful lot of Dark Ages because we're going to really struggle to get like wonders and you get stuff for putting like extra cities and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we're going to struggle to get era score. And our first slingers are in. Right, warriors, run over there. Ooh, ooh, up there. There's not many other people about yet. I thought I may have run into another sieve by now. I mean, that's fine. I am not complaining in any way, shape or form. I'm very happy that we've not met anyone else yet. Because, to be honest, the first person we meet is probably going to try and kill us to death in the face. Right, try and run up here and get that. That's going to be really valuable. And um, four turns until the next slinger. There's no barbarians in sight right now. Let's move you guys down here just to see if we can see any more little sort of goody hut tribal village things. Not down that way we can't. Hopefully no barbarians are going to run in from this side. That would be unfortunate. Okay, what's in this one? A point of population. Ah, brilliant. Okay, so what are they working now? Those three tiles. So I've put them a farm. They're not interested in the farm. They're going down production. They are thinking, yes, production is what we want to do. So yeah, they've uh, sort of eschewed the lovely farm life. They've gone for some spices, a bit of wood, and that stone just there. How long left to mining? Two turns. And we can put a quarry on that. That's going to be very good. Right, you guys run down here. <gasps> There's another one. This is brilliant. I hardly ever see these. Just you watch. Some scout's going to run in and steal that now. Hands off my tribal village. Ooh. Hello. Who was that? That is... That is a sciencey city. Babylon. Oh, Babylon. I like you. And what's that? Is that the sea? Coast and a lake. Okay, are we the first ones to meet Babylon? Yes, we are. The first sieve. We've earned an envoy. So, 
I think Babylon is very good. So we're going to get plus two science, which is lovely from the elf. That's very nice. And if we are this suzerain eventually at some point, plus two science from each great work of writing, plus one science from relics and artifacts. Okay. Yeah, that's probably not going to be so good for us. We're not going to have that much in the way of relics and artifacts. The other stuff might be useful. Uh, right. Onto that hill. And then we want to get onto that little goody hut thing. Right now, what do we want to research? Really, we need to head toward irrigation. We need to head toward that because we've got ourselves tobacco and spices which require irrigation. So that's pottery, I believe it's pottery and then irrigation. But writing would be really useful. Uh, no, pottery. Get pottery, get irrigation, get those luxuries on board. We can trade them if we ever meet anybody else. We can trade them away. That's very good. Um, the one thing we haven't got is mountains. We haven't got any mountains around of any note. So normally you'd go, right, I'll build um, my campus next to a mountain. Hooray, there's a science boost. We haven't got that luxury. We don't seem to have any mountains, unless there's some over here. These warriors will sort of endeavour to find out. There might be a mountain just there. I don't think there is. Maybe there's a bit of rainforest. Maybe we could build it there and hope that that tile is a rainforest tile. Get a little boost from that. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to wait and see when these warriors get down there. But um, yeah, that's not looking promising, is it, for that? Right, what are you going to give us? Give us something good. 40 gold. Okay. Okay, that's, that's not bad. I was hoping, secretly, secretly, I was hoping to get one of the relics. Sometimes you get a relic of, you know, like, Tears of the Tears of the Goddess or something like that, or Splinter of Wood from the Cross or some such nonsense. And um yeah, that already that would bring in tourism. That would be a tourism y thing straight from the off. That'd be brilliant. But alas, <laughs> alas no. Um Okay, but forty gold's okay. Forty gold is not to be sniffed at. Okay, let's bring those warriors onto that there. Put you onto there and bring you over there. Okay. It's not looking like there's mountains anywhere near us. Unless that's a hidden, secret, very small mountain. I don't think we've got any mountains. Right, let's drop you onto a hill. Uh, well, okay, I'm going to build a monument. Six turns. Let's get a monument constructed. We've not met any barbarians and no other civs, which is a little bit alarming. It's making me wonder whether I've actually put anybody... Ah, aha, just as I say that, some barbarians have appeared across there. So there are barbarians to the north. Okay, Bring the slingers up and the warriors can come back here and defend because they will start sending troops down. They'll start sending people down to come and harass us, which is a little bit irritating. Meanwhile, this slinger can cross over here. Uh, there's some more stone there. Two, three. No, that's out of our range. There is a bit of rice down here, though, which is quite nice. So, yeah, we'll get that. If we expand out a bit that way, we could get, grab another sort of source of tobacco down there. Another one for trading away. That mercury is going to be lovely to keep for us as well. Where are we expanding next? Ah, that thing there, that, the tile down there. And let's get our guy on here. Let's get our builder run out here and build a quarry for plus one production. And it boosts masonry. Hurrah, that's all very good. There you go. Yes, masonry is indeed boosted. Okay, right. This is looking good. It's, do you know what? I'm quite happy with the way it's going so far. I'm surprised we haven't met anyone, which is making me a little bit nervous that I've possibly not put the other sieves in. I have done that before. <laughs> I've done that before. Um, okay, you've got one more go. I think we put you, Builder Man, back in there. Have a little sleep. And we'll use you again when we've got irrigation. And we'll get these spices, which gets us a luxury, which makes everyone happy, which makes everyone do lots of lovely things. So that's splendid. Right, civics. What do we want to do? Craftsmanship, improve three tiles. I mean, in theory, we could do that. We could put a mine on here and three tiles would be improved and craftsmanship would be boosted. Or foreign trade, discover a second continent. Let's go down that. Let's go down foreign trade. When the monument's done, I want to get a scout. I want to get a scout in place. Right, let's also fortify you. Um, you guys can go just there. Oh, there's mountains just there, just ever so slightly far away. Uh, we'll have combat strength versus barbarians. Thank you very much. And production. Absolutely. Lots of production, please. Yes, the policy agenda is set. Right, let's see what we can do then. So three turns into the monument is complete. That's good. That'll start giving us some culture. You, I want to come back and stand there. I think just there. In fact, do you know what? Stand actually in the city itself. Go and position yourself in the city. 
Now, let's get ourselves irrigation, which is lovely. So we can clear marsh, which I suppose will be useful eventually. We want to do that tile. But it, more importantly, plantations. Gives us plantations, which we can put eventually on that tobacco, but in the more immediate future, on those spices. So yeah, we'll have that, please. Oh, we can't farm a resource to boost the thing. Never mind. Never mind. So yeah, where is everyone? Where are the other sieves? Given that they've all got a bazillion settlers and a bazillion warriors and everything, I thought they might have found us by now. I really don't know where they are. It's making me very uncomfortable. Oh, well, there, there's people around. An unmet city-state has been defeated. The city-states are already being obliterated from the game. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Uh, right, a scout. Three turns to build a scout this early on in the game is just brilliant. That extra point of production really does help throughout the whole game. That'll be sitting there, churning away, helping us out. And there we go. We've got this stone resource down here. Yeah, we are going to have to make a, a beeline for that mercury. We might have to buy the tiles. We may have to buy those tiles. Okay, right. Run time on. Run time on. Five turns to irrigation. Eight to foreign trade. Fortify that slinger in there. Irrigation is one turn away from maximum inspiration bonus. Never mind. We'll miss that. We'll have to miss it. But then we're going to get a scout. So the scout is going to head out. Oh, which way do you want to send the scout? I don't know. Let's send them down. No, let's send them up. We've not really explored up there. We kind of know there's Babylon down here. There's a bit of water down here. And there's a boat there. <laughs> it gives it away. Uh, let's go up this way. Go up this way, scout. Have a look up there and see what you can find. Production-wise, hmm, do we build another builder? get ourselves another builder and start improving our land? Or do we get some more defence? I think maybe at least one more unit is not going to go amiss. Okay, I'm being, I'm going to play, I'm going to sort of err on the side of caution. A warrior, a slinger, and then a builder, and then a granary for the plus one food. But I think we need to get better defence. We've got three units right now. I think five is probably going to be good with the scouts sort of wandering around. That's fine. Right, move the scouts very tentatively. Don't run them into where there's any barbarians or anything silly. Okay, nothing much going on. We'll put you on that hill. We'll put you on that hill next time. Good visibility, man and his dog. Good visibility from that hill. Yep, let's see what you've got. Oh, not, not as good visibility as I was hoping, to be perfectly honest. But okay, let's move you over there. Ah, barbarian slinger. Hopefully our scout can survive that because he is going to attack him. The scouts will attack the one man and his dog. Uh, the scouts, the slingers will. Oh, oh, right. There's barbarian warriors. I think it's time for us to run away, <laughs> run away, boldly run away. However, he actually did pretty well. We actually did pretty well there. That's no bad. You know, that's an all right sort of amount of damage taken from a barbarian slinger on deity difficulty. Do the barbarians have massive bonuses on this? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Okay, what I'm thinking we want to do is get walls. When we get attacked, which will happen, we want to get walls in. However, there are other things. So I've got, I've actually got notes. It's amazing. I've got notes. And I want to make beelines for certain things. I want to make beelines for certain wonders, which I think are going to be key to helping us. And one of them is fairly late on. Uh, it's in printing. If I can find where printing might be. Just here. We want the Forbidden City. We want that extra wild card policy slot because that could be very powerful. It'll never, ever be boosted. Never be boosted, which is a shame, but because uh, we can't build two universities. But um, yeah, so right uh, printing, sorry. So we kind of need to remember to kind of go down this track eventually. We could get a wheel, a research the wheel to get a water mill. That's food and production. That's no bad thing to have. But I think maybe let's go for masonry. Get ourselves walls. It's boosted, which is a nice thing. And walls means that the uh, city can attack, which is lovely. So let's get that in. Let's get that in. Let's get ourselves some masonry. Give ourselves at least an extra sort of line of defense. If the barbarians come and knock in, which they're going to, another city state has been obliterated. Leave them alone. Leave them alone, you big bullies. Um, warrior can go down there. Put a warrior down that side. Uh, scouts... Very gingerly move you that way. Oh, oh yes. I'm a little bit concerned that perhaps there's nobody else on this continent except me. Where are the other sieves? I'm now increasingly paranoid that something's gone wrong and I'm entirely on my own. Okay, fortify you. Absolutely, go and do that. My unit has earned experience. 
Yeah, okay. That's not the best thing in the world. Um, woods and rainforest or hills. Uh, there's more woods and rainforest around than it looks like there's hills. So, uh, yeah, have woods and rainforest, please. That's good because it's healed you up a bit anyway. That's absolutely fine. So we're going to bring you... Well, something must be gone. There must be people around because the city-states are being absolutely obliterated. Paris needs more amenities. Oh, and I've now got irrigation, haven't I? So let's run down to here onto those spices. We'll get ourselves spices. That'll be lovely. That will sort out the nagging message there. We can also do a trade route. So we could send a trade route down to Babylon. I don't know what they would, you know, give us for that. I don't know what the advantages would be, but you know, that's a good thing. Right, run down here. Oh, there's lovely chocolate. Lovely chocolate. Okay. And actually, normally I would go for that. I would normally go for the Oracle. But in this particular game, is that going to be that powerful? I'm not entirely sure. Let's get craftsmanship, because that will be boosted next turn or the turn after that when we put uh, the plantation on those spices. So that'll get boosted. It's sort of fairly early on anyway. New policy cards have been unlocked. So yes, it's a little policy reminder thing. It's also the Sequi interface just saying, don't forget, new policy things are here. Do you want to change anything? So gold from trade routes, 100% production toward ancient and classical era. Naval units, looks like naval units are going to be entirely no use to us at all because we've not got access to the sea. So yeah, we can ignore all sort of naval stuff really largely. Though you do need to go down some of those routes to get the... Um, the mass production and stuff. Uh, right, Slinger, move on to that tile and fortify. Scout, trundle down here a little bit more. And Shufty onto the next turn. I'm, I now really want to meet another Civ. I really want to meet another Civ. So there's barbarians around. Uh, okay, right, I don't... Oh, hang on, no, you'll be fine. Because you're going to disappear now. You're going to build a plantation, which boosts craftsmanship, which is lovely. So that's nice. And it gives us an amenity... So they're content at the moment. They are content. They have one immunity from luxuries, one from entertainment. They are absolutely fine. So that's good news. Let's go back here. Uh, right, scouts. There is a scout barbarian thing over there. Let's run you down here past Babylon. I want to come down here now. I want to come down here, and now my new aim... My new aim is not to survive the attacks of the other Civs and the Barbarians. It is to simply find them, because I don't know where they are. I'm really worried that something's gone horribly wrong. Uh, okay, you. Um, attack... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't we get... Can you come here? Can you stand there for a second? Um, and then can you guys attack that? Hopefully you'll take it out. No. We get a bonus if we do that, don't we? We get a boost to archery, possibly. Right, run you guys down to there. Uh, barbarians, yes, barbarians spotted. Absolutely fine. Another city-state has been defeated. So, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm worried about not finding any of the civs. But I, I am. I'm a little bit concerned that possibly we should be finding them. Unless I'm on a really obscure corner of the map or something. I really don't know. Right, run back into there. Uh, you guys can run down to there. Ooh, it's a little lake. It's a little teeny tiny lake. Okay, uh, well, you guys can fortify back there then. That's absolutely fine. What turn are we on? 30. 30 turns. We're getting ourselves a builder in. We've done masonry and sit uh, craftsmanship. I was going to say citizenship. <laughs> That's not what that word says, Penge. Right, on to there. Ah! Ah, oh my goodness, few, few. There are other people. Okay, and it's Genghis Khan. Okay, so here's one of the ones I'm not too worried about. Yes, it's Genghis Khan. He has an amazing moustache and beard combo. But, um, and a good hat. You know, that? Yeah, his hat's pretty good. His hat is pretty good. I like the sort of, <laughs> I like the nipple on the top. It's a good hat nipple right there. Um, I am Genghis Khan. Before me lie future Mongolian lands. Behind me is the only cavalry that matters. It is an honour to meet you, and I'm a little bit scared, to be honest. Uh, do you know whose lands you approach? See the Keshik gather and know that this is Mongolia. Okay, I would love to sample your hospitality. Absolutely. Writing is boosted. Right. So we are near to Genghis Khan and the Mongolian Empire. He should be relatively sort of cordial to me, because... Uh, he will have a greater cavalry presence than me, so he will not dislike me having more cavalry than him. He should be sort of fairly happy. Um, so we can see what they've got, actually. We can see their progress here. I think this is the CQE interface as well. So he's got a general score of 48. He's got a science of 12, 
and a military power of 198. That is not as much as I was expecting, I'll be honest. That is lower than I was thinking it was going to be. But okay, that's fine. I mean, I'll take that. That's great. Um, ah, we get an era score. That's quite nice. We've got five era score. Um, let's get animal husbandry just because we've got cow. Oh, no, no, they're not cows. I thought the cows were in our realm, but no, they're not. No, let's not go down that route then. Let's get ourselves writing. Let's get writing on the go. Is that going to open up anything else that we particularly really want? The market and the commercial hub is going to be really useful. That's going to be very handy indeed. We then want to get down here because we want to get ourselves workshops and things like that. But we do need some wonders. I do need a wonder in at some point. I need to get a wonder constructed. I mean, we could, in theory, build on desert. No, we haven't got a desert tile, have we? We haven't got a desert tile. I'm surprised Stonehenge hasn't been built by now. Normally Stonehenge is built. Let's get animal husbandry. Let's see if we can get the Temple of Artemis. What's that? Must be placed adjacent to a camp. Oh, we're not going to have any camps though, are we? I don't think we've got any space for camps. Down there would be a camp. And that's it. Oh, that's a shame. No, we've got none of that. That is... Oh, that's just irritating. Never mind. Never mind. Right. Civic tree. Where do we want to go next? I think... And there's a few. There's a few good ones. Early Empire is good. Open Borders and all that kind of stuff. Mysticism for the Oracle. Patronage of great people costs 25% less faith. Am I going to have any faith at all? I don't know. Districts in the city provide two great person points of their type. Must be built on hills. We get culture and we get faith if we build the Oracle. But this here gives us our governor. We will get our very first and only governor in this game. Well, we might have other governors, but they're just going to sit about kicking their heels, you know, looking at the governor who we've put in the city at the time. Um, so, yeah, we could get ourselves a governor and a governor title. So it's a choice between either get a wonder in and an envoy, which is, yeah, that's nice as well. That's lovely. Or oh, we get great scientist points as well. That's quite cool as well. Uh, so we either get ourselves a wonder, well, the chance to build a wonder, or get ourselves a governor. I'm a bit torn. Do you know what? I'm going to go down the governor. I'm going to go down the governor route. Uh, build any specialty district. We could, in theory, get that done first, though, and boost it. We could boost that. Early Empire will be boosted anyway. Because we're going to grow to at least six. That'll just happen by virtue of playing the game. So maybe we go down Mysticism. Because we're never going to found a Pantheon. And then when that's boosted. When we found a specialty district. Which we'll do sooner rather than later. That'll be boosted. So we'll do that quicker. Uh, mysticism is also only 11 turns. Yeah, okay. Mysticism. Oh, dear me. I'm so indecisive when it comes to this stuff. And you know what? Yeah, animal husbandry. Just get animal husbandry done. It's four turns. It's not that bad. And now we're going to get our builder. So our next builder is done. I think we put a builder on that rice. So we'll work that rice. What tile are we going for next? We're going for the tobacco. So we can get that tobacco. So I think we go down here to this stone. We put a quarry on there. We get the rice and we get that tobacco. Because by the time he's done those, we can then make his way over to the tobacco. So let's go to the rice first. Put stuff on there. Uh, you need to run back this way, my little scout friend. Uh, we're going to try and go around this way, around Babylon. Just to see what's going on. Um, yeah, there's some scout stuff. We'll completely ignore that. We'll completely ignore the barbarians. We'll just run away from them, bravely running away. And um, yeah, do that. Food on there. Nice boost of food. Lovely. Farm sorted. Little paddy rice, sort of a rice farm. Looks lovely, all the little paddy fields. I'm sending you gifts. Surplus horses, a youth's bow, and air rag. Air rag? Hopefully that's some sort of... Oh, it is. Drink. Yes, to fortify you. Drink up. Oh, absolutely. Your delegation is most welcome. Please like me. Goodbye. I am now going to approach you and do the very same thing. Hello. Right, what's his opinion of me? First impressions of me minus four. That doesn't mean he hates me. That's okay. Would you like a delegation? My riders escorted your delegation to safety and distributed your gifts. They were adequate. Uh, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I wonder what I gave them. I wonder what I gave them. Presumably something made of stone. We've got stone. We might have given them some rice. That's lovely. And then some spices. I bet we gave them something nice and spicy. That's good. Uh, right. You get down there, but but don't go that way. Because that scout will come and steal you. So go uh, go there. 
go and do that. That might be a slightly longer route, but at least you'll be sort of alive by the end of it and still in my control. Okay, run time on. Yeah, let's go down here. Let's go down the side of Babylon. Mongolia built a monument in Brussels. Okay, that's fine. Brussels. So the Mongolians have been the ones stamping on people, have they? Oh, great. <laughs> there we go. So they've already obliterated Brussels from the map. That's nice. Okay. Now we're getting into this bit where I actually... Need, normally I just go, ah, I kind of fancy writing. I now need to sort of try and think tactically about what I want to get and when. And this is where it becomes difficult because I don't normally play like this. I don't normally play like this at all. So bronze working would be useful to show iron. It's very handy. However, we could get writing and then build our campus. Plus writing is boosted, which is really good. But archery gives us archers, as you might guess from the name. And that could also be really good. That gives us a wonder. So we could get Stonehenge, which I'm still amazed that nobody has built. Normally, Stonehenge is one of the things that goes first. I think we get writing. Get writing. Get the campus in. We've got some good production. So, you know, we should be okay at building that. It should be fairly quick. And that will boost uh, whatever that was. State workforce, was it or something? One of the other things in there. One of the other uh, civics. So when that's boosted. There we go. Early empires boosted because we've got a city size of six. That just sort of happens. Right, put you down there. And you can build a quarry. Beautifuls. You can run down here. Uh, I wonder if everyone's sort of behind Babylon over here. I wonder if everyone else is sort of over here. How intriguing. Also, trade route. We could send a trade route to Genghis Khan. And that might make him love us. And he won't come and kill us with horses. That would be beneficial to everybody. That's not beneficial to anybody, however. That giant barbarian encampment full of men with, with pointy sticks is not good for our man and his dog. Hmm, we might need to uh, change plans there. So, we can build ancient walls. We can build the hanging gardens. Increases growth by 15%. That's not going to be particularly useful. I'm not that bothered. Uh, and we can't build the pyramids because we've got no, um, no desert tile, which is absolutely fine. Uh, we could put a trader. Send the trader over to somewhere else. I mean, that's good for money, but there are barbarians wandering around still. And they will plunder our trade routes. We could do with someone settling a tiny bit nearer. I think Ancient Walls. Ancient Walls is good. It gives us that extra element of defence. And it's only six turns. It's lovely. I like having things done that quick. Ah, Gilgamesh of Sumeria and King of Uruk. Do not be afraid. I am good to my friends. Be my friend. Be my friend. You terrify me. You, visually, are a scary man. Look at the size of your arms. Your arms are the same size as me. You're terrifying. I mean, and your beard is quite amazing. You have an amazing beard. I mean, it's also like twiddly little, twiddly little sort of knots. I mean, it, it's visually very impressive, but yeah, you, you, you scare me. You scare me because you're just so big. You're just so vast and wide. <laughs> so um, would you like to visit our nearby city? Please do, and please don't hurt me. Uh, you... I've got a score of 63, a science of 12, and a military of 316. Oh dear. <laughs> Please don't attack me, anybody. I might need to boost my military a little bit. I suspect my military might be on the limited side. Uh, oh, I should have attacked that scout. I should have gone and killed that scout, because that scout might do some pillaging, which would be really irritating. Right, we're going to wander through Babylon's territory. I'm sure they're fine with that. They don't care, do they? Uh, where are you? Samaria might possibly be up here. I think mercifully they're quite far away. I can't see any of their cities. They're not right nearby. They will have about 12 bazillion of those little, um, what are they, like chariot type uh, war carts. They will have a lot of those war carts. They generally send those in. Okay, right. I think we're going to leave it there. I think that's a good point to stop playing. Writing is nearly done. Writing is pretty much done. Mysticism has only three turns left. We could then possibly get our campus built, then get an oracle. Get the oracle constructed somewhere in our city. We might buy a tile. Maybe that tile could be useful to purchase. And then we've met the um, we've met Genghis down here. That's lovely. He seems okay. He um, has a relationship value of minus one. Their first impressions of me were okay. And then we sent them a delegation and they loved the delegation. That's absolutely fine. Uh, oh, his first impressions of me are minus eight. That's not very good at all. Hello, Mr. Beards. Would you like a delegation? I think not. Don't hurt me, please. His agenda is ally of Enkidu. Like civs who are willing to form a long-term alliance. Would you like to form 
a long-term alliance, perhaps. <laughs> I am absolutely... Hang on, hang on. It just says like civilizations who are willing to form a long-term alliance. Hello, I am willing to form a long-term alliance. Like me, please. Please like me. Uh, can we declare friendship? Gilgamesh is happy to accept your friendship. Let the world know you are my sworn friend. Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that. That is a grand level of surprise. Good grief. Would you like a delegation now? Gilgamesh has received your tributes and your envoy. He will let them enter Uruk. <laughs> oh, yes. Have I just averted war? I am the king of diplomacy. He's got, he's got a smiley face. He likes declared friends. He's a declared friend. We sent them a delegation and 12 Gilgamesh likes declared friends. I honestly didn't think that was going to work. Oh, that is that is the best thing. That has made my day. We've got a pretty good starting city, uh, starting location, sorry. It's not the best. It's not the best location I've ever seen, but it's certainly not the worst. And oh, my goodness, I had some absolutely terrible ones. I had to go through some quite a few really awful starting locations before I actually got to this one. So that's okay. The only thing I would change... I'd throw a mountain in somewhere. I'd chuck a mountain just there. If I could grow a mountain out the ground, and then I'd stick our campus sort of over there. So yeah, the minute our campus is not going to get a boost from anything, unless we put it next to wonders and stuff. And that requires an awful lot of planning. And speaking of planning, next time out, I might have to do that. I might have to have a look, drop some map pins in to see where the best places are for stuff like the Forbidden City and Royal Valley and the Bolshoi Theatre and the Padala Palace and Broadway and all that kind of stuff. I need to plan that out because I don't just want to go, eh, I'll put a, uh, put a campus there and then later on realise that that spot where the campus is is the perfect spot for the Royal Valley and now I've sort of, you know, done myself out of that wonder or something stupid. So uh, yes, next time out, there may well be some planning. Hang on, can, can we go to Genghis? Would you like to be my friend? No, okay. You don't want to be my friend, but he absolutely loves me. Oh, I'm so happy Gilgamesh likes me. But there we go. I think that is a very good point to leave it there. And things are going surprisingly well. I am I am quite surprised. You know what I'm going to do? Let's try and chase after that barbarian scout. If we can kill it, it'll boost things or whatever. At least we'll kill someone. We'll just kill someone and it'll be fine. So, uh, yeah, hopefully... You are enjoying this, and hopefully you think this is an interesting challenge. I really hope that you, uh, you're able to sort of join me throughout this challenge and see how we get on. I'm, I'm a little bit more hopeful now we've got a good starting location. I'm a little bit more hopeful. So yes, hopefully uh, we will not be obliterated in like the second part of something because that would be ultimately very disappointing. So if you uh, have enjoyed this or if you're going to uh, think you might like the series as a whole, please do leave a like and also please do subscribe if you're not already to keep up to date with how we get on in our Civilization 6 Rise and Fall Deity Difficulty 1 City Challenge. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. The city of Cupboard, it can be full of geeks, very loyal geeks to me. It's this sort of stripy hill. That's interesting. Oh, a stripy mountain. Sorry, I, I downgraded you to a hill. It really irritate the Norwegians. Everyone had gold. People were lying on beds of gold. They were eating gold. They were trying to wash their hair with gold. There was gold literally everywhere in our empire. <laughs>